Welcome to Dive Into Eclipse. This video was created for use with our books, Java How to Program 10th edition and Java SE8 for Programmers 3rd edition, which is a subset of Java How to Program. In this video, I'll talk about where to get Eclipse, how to configure the IDE to display line numbers, and also how to configure the IDE's tab settings, how to create a project, how to add existing source code to a project so that you can test existing programs, and also how to create new source code files so that you can write your own Java programs from scratch. After watching these videos, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at the email address or through the Facebook and Google Plus pages shown on the screen. Before you can install Eclipse, you must make sure that you have at least a Java runtime environment installed on your computer, if not the full Java development kit. And you can get either one of those from the oracle.com website that you see in my browser here. Now, if you scroll down on this page, you'll be able to download the full JDK or a JRE. If you're using this with our textbooks, uh, I would recommend that you, in fact, download the, and install the Java Development Kit, the JDK. The current release is now for Java SE8, which was just released in March of 2014. With our books, you can choose to use either Java SE8 or Java SE7. So if you want the SE8 version, you'll work from this portion of the page. And if you scroll down, you can see that you can also download the current Java SE7 version as well. Now, once those are installed, and you'll want to make sure you follow carefully the installation instructions linked from this page, then you can go to the eclipse.org slash downloads site, and that's where you can download various versions of the Eclipse IDE. So first of all, if I scroll down just a little bit here, you'll see that there's a version called the Eclipse IDE for Java developers, and that's the primary version that you would use with our Java How to Program and Java SE8 for Programmers textbooks. As you can see here, it's showing the Windows downloads because I happen to be recording this video on a Windows computer. However, you can click this down arrow here to see the Linux and Mac OS versions as well and download the IDE for those platforms. Now, when you're downloading Eclipse, what you're going to get is an, uh, a zip file or an archive file that you simply need to extract onto your computer wherever you want the file to be placed. In the case of a Mac, you may drag it, for example, into your Applications folder. In my case, I extracted the folder into my C drive in a subfolder called Eclipse, and this is the contents of that folder on my Windows system. Regardless of which platform you're running on, once you've downloaded and installed, or, or I should say extracted Eclipse, you'll have this icon here, which is the icon for the executable for Eclipse on your platform. And once you've extracted it, you can double click that file to launch the IDE. Now, uh, before I go into what's going on on the screen here, let's go back over to the web browser and I just want to point out this link here for the Java 8 support. At the time of this video recording, Eclipse Kepler 4.3.2 is the current release of Eclipse. They are working on a new release that has Java 8 support built in from the, the get-go, which is under the developer builds. However, you can add Java 8 support to the Eclipse Kepler release. After you've installed it, simply click this link here and then follow the instructions that they provide to add Java 8 capabilities to the Kepler version of the Eclipse IDE. So going back over to the Workspace Launcher window, when you first launch Eclipse, this window will be presented to you. A workspace is basically a group of projects that you're working on and all of the settings for the IDE. So, uh, for example, Eclipse has what we call different perspectives that arrange the windows within the IDE different ways. And if you're working on Java programming, the windows that you want on the screen might be different from what you would 
want on the screen if you're doing web development or Android application development, etc. So a workspace is where your projects will get stored and by default it will create a folder called workspace in your user account folder for whatever platform you happen to be working on. So I'll just use the default workspace and click OK. Now when you load up Eclipse for the first time you'll be presented with the welcome window and if you hover over the different icons you'll see that they give you an overview page where you can learn more about the features of the IDE, find out what's new in this version and as you go around there's some sample code and tutorials and then you can go to the workbench which is actually the set of windows where you'll do your development. You can either click this icon to do that or you can simply close the welcome window. And by the way, if you ever need to get back there, you can get to it via the help menu. Now, in order to match up with the way we present our source code, you're probably going to want to be able to view line numbers in the text editor and also configure your tab settings in the source code. And those things can be configured through the preferences option in the window menu on Windows and on Linux and if you're on Mac OS 10 then in the Eclipse application menu there will be a preferences option where you can access this menu item. So when you select preferences to uh, be able to configure the tab settings you can just search for that where it says type filter text here so I'll type tab and as I type tabs you can see that one of the categories is text editors which is the one that we need not only for configuring tabs but also for telling the editors to use line numbers for readability. So you can see the show line numbers feature right here which I checked off in my IDE already. Also I changed the tab width, the displayed tab width to three spaces and I indicated that I wanted to insert spaces for tabs. I prefer to use spacing for my tabbing in my source code files. That also has to do with our authoring processes when we take the source code and paste it into a textbook file because tabs work differently in different types of text editors. So that's all you need to do and then once you've configured your tabs you can go ahead and click OK and, and remember again to check off show line numbers as well. Java source code files in an Eclipse IDE live inside of a concept called a project and without a project you cannot add source code files for editing nor can you compile and run those programs. So the first step in being able to run an existing program in Eclipse or being able to create a new program in Eclipse is creating a Java project. So over here in the Package Explorer window, this is where you're going to see the various projects that you have open at any given time. And within one workspace, you can have actually many separate projects open. So I'm going to right click here and select New Java Project, which I can also access, by the way, through the File menu or the toolbar up above the Package Explorer window. And when I click that, I'm given a new Java project window where I can provide a name for the project, indicate where I want the source code for that project to be stored, and I can also make some other uh, selections as well. So let's just say I want to create a project called test just for argument's sake. I can type that in here. I'm going to leave all the default settings which is fine for use with the examples that we present. And when I click next it will allow me if I want to to specify some additional settings for the project and again I'm not going to do that here I'm simply going to click finish. Now when I do that and I expand this node you'll notice that there's a source folder here and within that source folder right now there's nothing and then there's a link to the Java runtime environment for Java 8 which is going to allow us to compile Java 8 and earlier programs actually using the IDE. So uh, that's a nice feature of the IDE. It can also sometimes lead to errors while you're still writing your code because you haven't completed writing an uh, individual statement or a piece of a program yet as well. Now if you'd like to create a new program from scratch you have a couple of options. One is that you could remove the source code files from an existing project such as the test project that you see here 
or you can create an entirely new project then add .java source code files to it using the tools in the file menu. So let's say we want to create a completely new project. So I'll right click here in the package explorer and select new Java project and we'll call this one welcome just to, uh, to mimic the first application I demonstrated to you. Uh, you can leave the settings on this page as is and simply click finish to create a new shell project to work in and again you'll have an empty source folder at that point. Now you can either go to the file menu and select new class to add a new item into this project or you can go ahead and right click directly on the source folder itself and select new class to create a new Java class. Every Java program consists of at least one class definition. Typically each and every class you create will be placed into its own .java source code file so if you have to create a multi-source file program you'll repeat this step for each individual .java file that you intend to add to the project each class you intend to add so let me go ahead and click class here and this dialog as you learn more about java will allow you to specify a decent amount of information about the class you're creating. For today, we just want to show you how to create a basic class. We'll call this class welcome just for whoops, uh, just for demonstration purposes. And you can leave this piece of the dialogue alone. You can leave everything up top alone as well. And for this one, you're going to want to check off the main method, which is the starting point for every Java application. At least one class in a Java application has to have a main method, and that would be the starting point for your program. So we'll go ahead and click finish at this point, and it will automatically create the shell of the welcome class definition. The default curly brace placement in Eclipse is different from what I like to use personally, so I'll just go ahead and move these curly braces to the next line in each case. And at this point, you can start entering code into your program where this comment is here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that comment, and we'll just add one line of code for the moment that is going to... Uh, display for you a line of text when we run the program uh, and it'll show up down here in the console window. Now you'll notice I haven't completed the statement that I'm writing so I'm already getting an error message which is a demonstration of the fact that Eclipse is constantly compiling your code in the background to help you as you write the code watch out for compilation errors. So as I type system and dot, you'll notice this window pops up. Uh, the IDE will help you write your code uh, by displaying this window with options that are allowed to appear to the right of that dot separator. So I want to do some output, so I'm going to select out in this case. And then I'm going to put another dot. Uh, for some reason, that error message pops up once in a while, but in, a, in reality, it is not having a problem locating the information for this feature here. But in any case, I want to go ahead and start to print something. And you'll notice as I type print that it narrows down the list to everything that starts with print. And the particular version of print that I'll be using in this case is actually print ln with a string argument. Uh, and it will figure that out for you as you're typing as well. So I'm going to type system.out.println, welcome to Java, exclamation point, and I'll s finish that statement off with a semicolon. And now we have a simple Java application that will display a line of text. And when I run that here, it'll first ask me to save the file, which I will do. And you can see that it was able to display the results down here in the console window. Now, if at any time, like I said, if you need more space to work with for a given window, you can minimize other windows inside of the uh, development tool. The, each of the windows has this minimize button as well as a maximize button. And again, you can double click any tab to make it occupy the entire 
um, window area within the IDE. So one of the things I commonly do, uh, especially when I'm recording videos and I want to be able to show more source code on the screen at a given time, is I'll minimize this bottom area. So all of the tabs go away at that point and they're easily accessible to you over here on the right side. Similarly with the package explorer, if I want to minimize that, it minimizes down to the left side here and at any point I can restore either of these by clicking the restore button on these mini toolbars. So at this point you're ready to go ahead and use the Eclipse IDE with our Java How to Program, Java SE8 for Programmers, or Java Fundamentals Live Lessons videos.